So here I'm just dropping some glitter. This is Prince color. And then I'm going to use the Desert Delight. These are chunky glitters. And they will stick directly to your polymer clay when you bake it. So I'm just scattering at the moment to get some nice coverage of the chunky particles on the clay. And then I'm just using my finger to make sure they're all flat and pressed down. Next, I'm going to take our holographic glitters, which are tiny, the little ultra fine particles. This is a pink color that I thought would go well with the Prince and the Desert Delight. And I'm just using that because the chunky glitters don't give you full coverage. They're big pieces, and I wanted that sort of all over glittery effect on the surface of my clay. And you'll notice the clay I'm using is a scrap color that I mixed from purples and grays that were just sitting on my desk. So this is a great way to turn your scrap into something absolutely beautiful. Look at what that surface looks like now. And I could use it just like that, but I'm choosing to use a silkscreen pattern over it to reveal some of the glitter. So here I have the Trip to India silk screen and an acrylic block. This is how I choose to rub down my silk screens and make them stick to my clay. So I'm just applying some pressure, getting out the bubbles, grabbing my Waverly matte chalk paint. The color is maize. And I'm just going to use our Create Along squeegee that was specially designed for silk screens to spread this paint. And I tend to be light on my paint, so here I'm just adding enough to make sure that I've covered the full surface. And I'm going to peel that back and go wash it. And this is my Ranger heat tool, which is kind of a low temp, very light um, drying tool for acrylic paint. So if you are uh, impatient like I am, I just gave it a very quick light blast with this tool. I'm not trying to cure the clay. I'm not trying to make it hot. I'm just kind of drying the paint so I can get on with it. Look how pretty that is. And now I have the new pointed Homsa cutter that is very sharp and I'm just going to go ahead and cut out some shapes to make my earrings with. And again, I, use, I like to use my acrylic block so I get even pressure for doing cutouts. So that's what I'm doing there. Now that I've got my Hamsa shapes cut out, I do have some extra clay that I don't want to go to waste. So I'm just grabbing my set of Geo stud cutters and I'm going to cut out some pieces that I don't intend to use now, but I will bake them with the Hamsas and use them later in a different pair of earrings or with some other mixed media piece or whatever. I just don't like to waste when I've got such a pretty pattern going on.
So those got baked and I also used UV resin to make a beautiful shiny coating on there. And I'm going to link below this video to our blog post where you'll be able to find more information about how I'm putting these earrings together and a whole other video is actually in the blog post. So you'll wanna go check that out. So I'm just drilling holes so that I can continue earring assembly and put the little dangling drops on there. So I have some jump rings, I have head pins that have a little ball at the end, and these are teardropped shaped um, glass beads and turquoise chips. So I'm just making little dangles to put at the bottom of the earring. And I'm just gonna bend this and put a, a little simple loop so that it can be hung from a jump ring. So I've got one earring assembled, you can see there on the left, and I'm just gonna go ahead and open my jump rings sideways with some flat chain nose pliers, stick a little jump ring at the bottom where I already drilled the hole, and attach the pre-made little dangle loops that I just created and very soon I'm gonna have a finished pair of earrings. So in the other video I was talking about in the blog post linked below, um, you will find another few minutes where I actually explained how to make your earrings hang properly to the front, why I have three different sizes of jump rings sitting on my table, where I bought all my tools, why I'm using the tools I'm using. It's a very informative second video. It's just that I did it on Instagram Live and then I couldn't download the video, so I had to embed it on the blog. So you can either watch that at Polymer Clay TV on Instagram, or you can go ahead and just easily click the link below and go see uh, another explanation of how to make your clay earrings look gorgeous and where to get your tools. I hope that you enjoyed this. All of the really fun tools and supplies like the silk screens and cutters and the glitters are available at createalong.com. So come on over and check us out.